Is a Gibson J200 by any other name still a J200? It is when it's bright red and comes from Orianthi, and we're going to tell you what makes this guitar maybe better than that guitar, so stay tuned. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, visit our Teespring store link below for our custom designed t-shirts, like the most popular storefront t-shirt that I am wearing. I got mine, get yours. So we are looking at two Gibson, very large guitars, the SJ for Super Jumbo, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got the standard one, mm -hmm. which is the vintage, or the original collection. Yes. Vintage-esque uh, SJ200. And I have the beautiful bright red Orianthi, which is a new artist model that came out earlier this year. We wanted to do a review on this, and the first ones we got immediately sold. Yeah. So rather than a review, let's talk about what's different and why you might want to spend an extra grand to get Orianthi's version of it. Yeah. So first of all, um, this, other than having the exact same haircut than you. Yeah. <laughs> what Classic. can you tell us about Orianti? I mean, I know that she is a pretty, I think, well. Pretty. Yeah, okay. Uh, no, I think she's kind of a musician's musician to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. Like those who know of her know that she's a total shredder. I know that she's kind of featured with a lot of different Classic rock bands, done some shows with them. She's done everything from like Alice in Chains, yeah. Carrie Underwood, Michael Jackson. Yeah, it's like crazy. that's range. Yeah, and it's cool. I uh, we were talking with someone, I think at Guitarlington that had hung around at Norman's mm -hmm. Rare Guitars and said that she's in there all the time. Just Did I say Alice in Chains. Yeah, Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper. Alice in Chains. She that could was, handle Alice in Chains. Too. Yeah, she's way ahead of that. Um, but yeah, I heard that she kind of comes into the store and jams out. I, yeah. So I'm guessing she's based out of LA, you know. But um, yeah, she's just a insane kind of shredding guitar player. So it's kind of cool to see an acoustic as well. When I think of her, I think electric guitar. But this is obviously kind of a pretty hard rock uh, interpretation of the SJ200. It's very cool, you know. The so they've offered the modern collection version of the SJ200 in mm. red before, but it's kind of like a wine red. It's almost mm -hmm. like burgundy. It's almost like the color of my truck. You know, it's like that dark, dark red, brownish in color. Mm -hmm. This, I actually like better. This is the bright red and very beautiful. Yeah, it's it's wild, but it works really well with the flame maple on the sides. Um, you can really see that. And, you know, it helps the grain come through because it's totally transparent. It's just like a stain. You know? mm -hmm. um, and then on the top, I believe that's a AAA top, right? Triple A, Sitka, Sitka Spruce. Spruce top. You know, these are very similar in that they're the same body shape, right? It's, it's the classic SJ200, the big jumbo, the king of flat tops from Gibson. Mm -hmm. They're both spruce. They're both maple. This is upgraded specs. So this is triple A maple. This is triple A Sitka Spruce uh, versus, I guess, double A yeah. on that standard guitar. So that's part of the upgrade that you get. Yeah, I mean, that one has some nice figuring, but this is a lot more uniform mm -hmm. uh, through it. Yeah, um, I, I actually kind of prefer, like you said, on that finish, the whole thing is transparent. There's parts on the vintage sunburst that it gets so dark yeah. you can't even see the figuring. Yeah, this you can really um, see it. So it's really nice. And uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I think something like that could be maybe if you see a photo online, it could be a little polarizing. Like mm -hmm. it's a bright red SJ200. But in person, it looks a lot more... Uh, you know, it just looks a lot nicer in person, it works. I think. Yeah. It works really well. I think the binding change helps, you know, that yeah. obviously has the cream binding. The black works with the, the red. I think that's a classic color combination. Uh, my high school colors were black and red, so shout out to Harlingen High School. Um, the pick guard and the inlay is a big part of this guitar, and I think it's fantastic. You know, we should also note the neck, too, because this they both have the flame maple necks. Yeah. But the red and then the gold tuners with that walnut stripe down the back that's just killer um so it's a gibson custom shop mm -hmm. that's part of the appeal here uh, it's kind of set apart in addition to being an artist model um, i think that typically is part and parcel if you're getting a gibson acoustic artist model it tends to be a custom shop um, and yeah there's a number of, of other differences so the bodies are basically the same the bracing is the same the necks in addition to the inlay are dramatically different so you have the classic kind of crown inlays and the uh, the typical, I don't even know what the motif they call it on the pickguard is. Oh, um, yeah. The plant inlay. This is Lotus. Lotus Blossoms. 
uh, kind of with pearls. Yeah, it's you know, cool. Kind of offset. Uh, that's what's going up the fretboard as well. And then you have Orianti's O logo. I'd like to have a logo of my my own. Do you think that's doable? We can make one. We, up we should all have our yeah. own like symbol, yeah. like the artist formerly known as Chris, oh, um, the artist formerly known as Cooper. When you gotta now, get your record label yeah, rights exactly. back, and that's what you do. But yeah, so she's got her cool logo up there. Mm -hmm. um, and if you didn't know what it was, it's just nice design uh, for Orianti. And overall, it's, I think it's a really nice and aesthetically yeah. pleasing guitar. So I noticed on the on Gibson spec sheet, it says that it's a different neck. That's an ES three forty five. It's an electric guitar neck. Yeah, which it's weird because. I've I've always found that this is pretty comfortable to begin with. I've always know. likened those neck to like a Les Paul neck yeah. anyway. Yeah, but it's cool to have something specific to point to. Mm -hmm. I I mean I'm sure it comes down to the fact that she loves an ES 345 and it's a very comfortable neck. Familiar. And just, yeah, and it's cool. It kind of brings this guitar. It's not in the modern collection, but it kind of pushes it in that direction a little bit. You know? It does. It, it modernizes it, and it's not just the carve, but the nut is narrower, narrower as well it's a more narrow nut um so that that's like 1.72 this is 1.63 so it's not it's not it's like a lot more narrow yeah. narrower yeah. say that five times fast um so it, it's a when you're so you're demoing these guitars for yeah. us today when you're feeling it did it feel substantially different did you feel crowded at all was it comfortable it's definitely comfortable it, it feels a little bit you know it's for me, it's never a thing of this is more comfortable or not. It's just, it takes an adjustment period. Right. And playing some other guitars today, I would say that these were probably the most comfortable necks that I played. And I, th I think I start with this one, and I felt it, and it was comfortable, and maybe just felt a little bit more smooth and, and uh, you know, a little bit faster on that one. But they're both comfortable. I do like the thought that that's just a little bit narrower, and I don't think I knew that when I was when I started playing them. So it makes a little sense. You yeah. Know? And pickups in these, I think they're both LR bags, correct? Yeah, Gibson has been doing, uh, had a pretty good partnership with LR bags. It's interesting, the implementation, because usually you see this up here. Yeah, it's I have two awesome. guitars with LR bags, that's where I mounted it. Yeah. Um, it makes sense, you can see the controls. That's probably something that she thought of, um, would be my guess, but uh, yeah, I like that. Yeah. It, so how's it mounted on that one? Is it's it up down top. There? Yeah, yeah, it's up top. Yeah, it's funky. Yeah, I think this is probably a, a Orianti. You know, that's the deal with a lot of the the signature models. It's you're you're getting things that are thought out by someone who plays them regularly. Yeah. And what, either in the studio or on stage has you know kind of adapted to changing things that works better. Yeah. You know, in the process, they're like this works better than the typical way. And sure enough, I think that probably does work better. Yeah, so it's pretty cool, cool implementation. Everyone's gonna start ripping out their rip out your preamps and yeah. turning them around. Absolutely. I so, gotta think about if you can actually just do that now. It might actually be made different. Yeah, that's weird. No, you probably can. Anyways. Well, either way, uh, they are both LR bags, but I'm not playing them uh, through the LR bags. We're just using warm WA47 Junior uh, just to get the pure acoustic tone. Mm -hmm. You know, LR bags probably the you know, kind of what we recommend to everybody if they want an aftermarket pickup in there. So you know it's going to sound great, but I think it's nice to put up a mic and get these purely acoustic. So, Absolutely. That's how yeah. most people will probably be playing them at home on their couch. So let's take a listen and see what they sound like.
So there you have it, the comparison between the uh, original collection, SJ200, and that beautiful burst. Mm -hmm. That's just a classic look. And then this Orient, the custom shop. And you know, despite the fact that they're basically the same guitar, the mm -hmm. same overall kind of specs on the body and the bracing and everything, they sound a little different. Yeah, and I hope that came across in the demos. Playing these, uh, I did notice just a lot more bass and a, just a big kind of girthier tone from the Orianti, and I think it could be attributed to a few different things. This came straight out of the box right now, right before we shot it, and this has been out for a little bit um, on the floor. And so maybe the strings are a little, you know, on here, but they look brand they new. They look brand I mean, new. It's crazy. Uh, um, I think I'm it might have something to do with the grade of the, the woods used. Yeah. So, you know, the higher end spruce is probably going to have an effect. Um, you know, the maybe the maple. I don't know. But it's definitely a noticeable thing. It is. Me. There's yeah. a lot more base to it, and it could be also because it's custom shop. Maybe there's just a little bit more tension that's being placed. Yeah, you know, the specs are that they're both hand scalped braced, you know, X braced guitars. But you know, with it being through the custom shop, you might think, well, maybe there's something else going on there that they're really not spelling out in the specifications. Whatever the cause, this definitely has more overall body and oomph to it. Yeah, I think so. And you know, I, I like that for sure. If you're gonna be, if both of these are extremely high-end guitars. They're investments, they are collector's items, they're professional grade instruments. <laughs> Would you say way. expensive and expensiver? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but I think for the price that this one is at, you're, you want as much sound out of it as possible. You want it to play to its full potential. It's very, very comfortable to play for a large guitar and the sound is like a big, big old explosion of tone. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Bold guitar, bold colors. I like it, you know, thousand dollars more. But if you're already in this yeah. price range, what's another grand, you know? Exactly. I mean, yeah, treat yourself. It's that time of the year. Oh yeah. And it, it, yeah, and it is the right color for Christmas. Yeah, for so, sure. Anyways. If you're going caroling this year, hurry you up think and get this one. It, yeah. Everyone will open their door, and they yeah. will not throw things at you. I kind of guarantee. So We'll see. Unless they're Martin fans or something. Something like that. Uh, anyways. So there you have it. If you have any more uh, questions about either of these guitars, you can find that on our website. What is the website, Cooper? So I'm trying to remember. Uh, I think it's www.alamomusic.com. That's right. So you can find photos of these guitars. You can also chat live with an associate who can help answer any of the questions you have, get more photos for you, even maybe a little playing demo, all of those things that when you're not here in person to purchase the guitar can answer most everything that you need to know um, and find the right guitar to suit your needs. I always mm. say at the end of the day, the very best guitar in the world is a bright red one with my personal logo on it. I gotta figure out what that is. Yeah. Maybe a bald head and a beard with some glasses or something. That's a cool logo. I, mean, <laughs> I think we started working that one up a while ago. There Just, you go. Yeah. So uh, anyways, definitely go to our website if you have any questions. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, like the videos, and drop us a comment below and tell us what you think. As always, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. <laughs>